I'm Mark Van Dusen for OBJ Regional. Next time you're watching a dramatic rescue on the news, take a closer look at that smoke locator bobbing in the waves. It's just possible the device was made right here in eastern Ontario. And the company has recently been recognized for years of manufacturing quality pyrotechnics. In our latest business profile, President and CEO John Witherspoon describes how business is smoking. Welcome to another uh, another uh, company profile uh, for Ottawa Business Journal uh, Regional. Today I'm uh, with uh, John Weatherspoon, uh, President and CEO of HFI Pyrotechnics. Now pyrotechnics is a word that conjures up all kinds of uh, things like smoke, uh, uh, noise and fire. Uh, John, what kind of uh, products does your company uh, manufacture? Uh, yes, we uh, thanks, Mark. We we uh, we manufacture a variety of different search and rescue and training devices that are used by uh, uh, coast guards uh, around the world, uh, navies, as well as as well as uh, military training devices. So things that basically provide flashbang uh, signal. It's more of a signal as well as a conditioning for uh, for battlefield conditioning. So so in essence, you'd use our products in in training training uh, events. Uh, where you're basically in, friend, in a friendly environment. Now, HFI uh, has a long legacy, uh, partly down on the St. Lawrence, uh, south of Ottawa, near, uh, near Prescott. Uh, fill me in a little bit on that aspect. Well, it, uh, so we so originally in 1873, when Dr. Hand uh, formed uh, Hand's Fireworks, he he started actually in Thorough, Thorough, Ontario which is uh, near Niagara Falls, Thorold, excuse me, Thorold, Ontario, near Niagara Falls. Uh, we slowly moved our way uh, eastward, uh, eventually ending up in Milton. And as we w ended up in Milton at the same time, we actually had a uh, producing facility in Papineauville, Quebec. So we had an 85-acre site that was probably... Uh, Probably they broke ground on it in the in the in the third, late 30s, early 40s, and really was there to support the war effort uh, during the Second World War. Uh, we've made we've we've done everything from parachutes to uh, to uh, to variety of different products for uh, to support the war effort during the Second World War, and then we've continued on through that process. The the, the uh, it, we we obviously have always been had our hands have always been in pyrotechnics because that's sort of our origins. Uh, pyrotechnics, as you know, is often uh, the 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 most famous one is fireworks, but uh, but uh, but a lot of it then evolved into uh, devices that are used in military uh, training applications and eventually evolve into illumination products, etc., for actual uh, for for and, and signaling that are actually used in 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 military uh, uh, activities. So. So you're now a standalone company. Um, give us a sense of, um, of how big you are, how many employees, perhaps a, a figure or two on, on, uh, on sales revenues or sales market. Sure, so, 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 we, so we, uh, we currently are 65 employees. Uh, we are, uh, we, we, in essence, are the sole supplier of uh, search and rescue um, marine markers for the US Navy. Uh, we also supply into uh, NATO, so we provide to most of the NATO countries, uh, into Sweden, uh, the Far East, uh, around the world. Really, we've uh, we've shipped our products to uh, to most countries and regions of the world, including Chile, uh, Curacao, Colombia. But so so we're 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 pretty. Uh, we're pretty international in, in flavor, uh, and uh, up until probably. Uh, uh, this year, this year, well, in the last couple of years, majority of our business has been the has been into the U.S. Navy as a sole supplier. That we're we're talking, uh, we had two uh, twelve and a half million dollar contracts with the uh, U.S. Navy in 2012 and 2013 to supply marine markers. Both of those contracts have been renewed for the next five years. So we're now we've now will now be the sole supplier to the U.S. Navy for ten years. Uh, we are obviously doing a good job because we've been renewed. Uh, and and as we speak, uh, we're in the process of, of uh, signing a strategic sourcing agreement with the Canadian military, which will basically make us the sole supplier to the Canadian military for the next seven years. Back to your products. Can you just name, give me some examples, name a few of the products. I know they have kind of, you know. Uh, oh, they have sort of military. So, so for the U.S. Uh, Navy, we make uh, the Mark 25 Mod 3, Mark 25 Mod 5. These are uh, uh, marine markers that are dropped from air, typically from either fixed wing or rotary wing aircraft. They hit the water, they ignite for 13 and a half, they burn for 13 and a half to 18 minutes. They 
give off a nice foot uh, foot and a half foot long flame as well as a lot of white smoke and they're really meant to be this sort of search and rescue you drop it in the water you can see the flame during the during the night but you also can see the smoke during the day and it's uh that's one of our products mark 58 mod one is is an, another uh, product for the u.s navy it's a uh, it's a product that that in essence uh, provides us with uh uh, uh, twice the amount of functionality. That is to say, it's a twice as large. It basically provides 40 to 60 minutes worth of, of flame and smoke. And again, is, is dropped off. It, it hangs off an F-18, for example, wing and can be dropped from an F-18. Uh, it's used in a variety of different functions. They often use them for training. So in actual, you drop one of our products in the water and then they shoot at it. It sort of it sounds like a bunch of kids at school, but it actually is, is probably a good, uh, a good, a good, a good activity to do in terms of training, it, especially at, at sea. It, it gives, uh, gives you ability to shoot for a lot of long distance at that obviously a very small uh, 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 target. And, and then we have uh, smoke grenades. We make, we make uh, red, yellow, green, violet, and white smoke grenades. These are, again, signaling products. These are products that you would basically toss. And uh, you, you often see them in, uh, in, in, in military where they're trying to bring a helicopter and they'll sh throw out a green smoke grenade and then the helicopter will come down and they'll, they'll uh, put, the, put, put the troops on and then leave. Uh, so so they, they, use, they use the color for, uh, for, be, for signifying what, what the activity wants to be. And, and obviously it's, it's key that uh, there's a, that that communication uh then we then we create a group of products uh our, our uh spgb which is sim simulated projectile ground ground bomb it literally sounds like an incoming mortar so it, it has a whistle that basically goes and then a bang and of course it's a firework at the end of the day but what it's used for is to really uh, condition troops when they're in in a in a mil in, in a in a fighting action to hear these things and not and, and not understand what they are, part one, but to part two, it, it adds, to, I'm sure, to the chaos of a of a military training event to sort of give them that sort of effect. But I find it intriguing about what you said a minute ago is is your is your uh, you know the contracts you have with the U.S. military. Surely they must be one of the biggest manufacturers in the world of of what you're talking about. How do you how do you outbid American companies? Uh, a, a twofold. I think we we have a I, we have a very a good. Uh, it, it's all about the people at the plant. I mean, I have a great group of people who are who are really uh, uh, have a wealth of experience. Uh, we have some we have some employees who have been twenty five thirty years uh, in working in this industry. Uh, I have not, so they they are they are the they are the backbone of our organization. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've basically placed ourselves in a position, we, we do run a lean operation and that's sort of a manufacturing term. Uh, so we're always looking for continuous improvement, uh, making our product better. Uh, and, and, and I, and I think we've, uh, we've, we, we, we're, we're, uh, we're attentive to both our procurement process in terms of materials, but also attentive to the, to the, to the customer's requirements. And, and I think that has, has, has placed us in very good stead. I, and in general, there's no question the Canadian dollar gives us a somewhat of an advantage, but I don't, I, I, I don't believe that's, I, you know, we're, we're probably, our, our goal is to keep our product price low enough that it, it's a it's a barrier to anyone wanting to come into this industry and compete against us we believe by the way we're the only producer of these products in the world how does technology play into this are there are there always new developments company or is this fairly static uh you know fairly static te technology or is there you know are there new improvements in laser uh, gps uh, anything like that well, I, I, there's no question. There's the, you always think that someone's going to generate something that's going to create a product that's that is uh, that that could uh, could displace our product. Our products are simple in nature and are uh, are old in technology. Uh, they they may be novel. They may be new in terms of their, the the way they perform and how consistently they perform. But for all intents and purposes, our products are probably in the order of thirty to forty years old at least. But it's but they are they perform. So I drop them out of a plane and they hit the water and they ignite and they operate and that's that's what people are looking for. If I throw a GPS uh, transponder out and and I use it, uh, it can be jammed. It can you know it's, it it could uh, it, it it there are a variety of different things that could interfere with with it and cause problems and therefore the you know the, the I think today technology is I mean. I, I'm, I'm sure someone could develop something that, that works in an unjammable environment, 
but but uh, at, you you can't do it for hundreds of dollars. You're talking about thousands of dollars for the same product. So. Where does the future lie? What what's uh, what's upcoming? What what's uh, any news to share with us? Well, sure. Yeah, thank you for asking. I think the the, the big one is really the uh, the strategic sourcing agreement that we're signing with uh, with the Canadian government. That's uh, that's that has occurred uh, in the next uh, will it be occurring in the next couple of days. It it basically is a seven year agreement that uh, identifies a group of products that we basically become the single source supplier to the the. Canadian government. Uh, it, it's done in a very it's done in a very proactive basis. They 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 go into our books. So it's it's not like this is an an opportunity for me to make a lot of money. But what it does do is it creates a foundation of business that will allow us to continue growing our company. And I believe it 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 it's well for me it's critical. What I what I need as a Canadian company is I need to be able to say my Canadian government is supporting me as an as an entity, and this is their this is the best way they can show that support is by saying we are going to buy we're going to buy from HFI Pyrotechnics, and they and they've acknowledged that. What's nice about this is this is the first we are the first company to be added to this since uh, since it's the munitions supply plan. This again this is associated with the munitions supply plan, a, a cabinet, an act. I think it's an act in cabinet or a cabinet document that was. Uh, generated in the early 70s. Uh, it's, it basically has had uh, sort of five, four or five main players on it, and we're the, we're the first one to be added to it since, uh, since its inception. So, John, did you play a lot with firecrackers when you were a kid, or did that come later in life? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I did play with a lot of firecrackers. I do, I do remember stories of how I fired firecrackers that I'm not allowed to talk about here because I do believe most people would be appalled by it. So I will not discuss those on this. But uh, <laughs> yes, firecracker. Well, I, mean, I, I do believe every young person who is who is who has some sort of uh, yen for science. The minute you, uh, the minute you. Uh, you see something like a firecracker, you go, oh, this is, what is causing that? What, you know, what's in the fuse? Let's break it open and look at what's inside the thing. What, what happens if I break a whole bunch of them open? What do I, you know, what happens if I light that? What happens? It's, uh, they're all things that, uh, yes, I have experimented in my time. <laughs> I think we all did a little bit of that in our youth. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, thanks very much for uh, yeah, talking no to us about this, um, well, this booming business. Yes, well, I'm hoping it's not booming. I hope it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, rocketing to the top. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs>